Mr. Dawes, where he gives us our evening prayer. And we're going to follow by Council McCroom with our Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Dawes, I know we just. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is what did it? Mayor, would you want to go ahead and do the pledge? That's right. We're going to do the pledge before the prayer. So if you place the flag and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pass it. Um, not here? Pass it, Mary. Let us look to the Lord. Gracious God, our Father, we come first to tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for keeping our city. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for all your goodness and your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness. For you've given us what we don't even deserve. You've been good to us, Lord. And now, Lord, we come to a point in, a, in this meeting that we ask that your, your spirits we take preeminence of this meeting. Lead and guide our thinking. Lead and guide our hearts, Lord. Touch our city. Heal our city, Lord. Every household, every resident, Lord. Every street. And then, Lord, remember our first responders, those who are keeping us safe. We ask you to touch them now and protect and keep them. Keep all our families, Lord. Heal our city today, Lord. And let us continue to go forward and order this city progress in your word. We'll be more than thankful to all that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. And look to this meeting now, Lord. Let us be on one accord. Continue to cover, keep our mayor, this council, and all those involved, every city employee, Lord, those who are in distress, Lord, touch, ease their comfort, keep them, Lord. And we love you this morning, and we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for all you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And in his matchless name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I'm going to call this meeting to order. I'm going to ask our city clerk, would she please call the roll? Present. City Attorney Stevenson. Here. City Attorney Suba Jr. Council Bruce. Council Cass. Here. Council Crow. Here. Councilor Hope. Here. Councilor Hutchinson. Here. Councilor Muhammad. Present. Councilor Monday. Here. Councilor Murray. Here. Councilor Willis. Here. We have a quorum present. Uh, I did hear from uh, Dr. Bruce. He's at the hospital with his father, as well as uh, Councilwoman Harris had knee surgery, and she's kind of resting that knee. Uh, we had no bid openings. Uh, with any corrections to the minutes? Motion approved and submitted. Yeah. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. We had no old business. Uh, Councilwoman Muhammad, will you give me the honor for R1 and R2? Yes, sir. I'd like to read R1 and R1 R1 and O1 by title only. I get a second? So second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. See the turn. R1 is a resolution of intent of the City Council of the City of West Memphis, Arkansas regarding the issuance of bonds for the purpose of assisting in the financing of the acquisition, construction, and equipping of an industrial facility to be located within the city. Here in that red, we know it was uh, uh, Council McCroom had some, uh, I guess, questions, just a little understanding. And we do have uh, Mr. Bob Atkins as well as Ward Wimbush online and uh, Council McCroom. Ask your question. Guys, can y'all um, enlighten the, or, or the uh, council on this uh, particular ordinance and when it says intent and, and kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at here because, and I think in the, um, 
the ordinance itself, it, it says $3 billion facility. It's a resolution, first of all, but not an ordinance. Uh, oh, yes. He's right. It's a resolution. Either one of you. That's hello. This is Ward Wimbin. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Just been having trouble with my phone and Zoom. They don't like each other. Uh, first off, this is a non-binding resolution. Uh, we, as I've mentioned before, have been working with a lot of companies uh, lately uh, for for our most desirable sites here. Uh, and of course, we're under NDAs for everything. We'd love to tell you everything we know. Uh, but this is for a project that is considering locating in West Memphis. At the moment, we believe we're the number one pick for them. And they have to make you know, certain decisions about property acquisitions. And one of their, their asks, one of their incentives is for a a pilot, the payment in lieu of tax. Now we have done this many times. In fact, uh, I do not know of us ever not agreeing to one of these. We've done one for Robert Bosch. In fact, we've done two of, two for them, and we've done some for some others. Uh, and all they're they're asking for. I mean, it's going to be a big project, and and uh, we'd like to um, locate them. And they've been vetted by the state. The state assures us this is a real company. This is a it's a real project, and that we would be proud to have them in our in our uh, community. And all they're asking here is that when they come back with the official pilot request, which would be an ordinance which the city council would vote on, that they could expect a favorable answer that we would support any future pilots and uh, i urge everybody to uh, uh agree to this and support this thank you ward did that help Wayne? yes I, at I least for me you know, i don't know about the rest of the council okay yes. But I was reading it as well, Mr. Wimbish. I think my question basically is the same as Mr. Wimbish. Now, with this $3 billion, is that some kind of a guarantee that uh, this company will be locating into our city? Um, I know you're not at liberty to disclose who the company is at this particular time, but what will this $3 billion do as far as um, our agreement with this company? Okay. so I. I'm sorry that you know, catch some little garbles. I think you're asking what what this company is going to do for us. Right. Uh, is that correct? Yes, what sir. What can we expect? Okay, so um, there will be we're working with them on um, their utility needs, and there would be a cash stream on the those needs. They um, they have some infrastructure that they needed built and unlike other other projects where we have to agree to extend it they will be paying for all the they'll ask us to do it but they'll be paying for all the infrastructure extensions and then we we are working with them on a community development agreement uh, we're asking for uh, an, an annual payment to the city that and, you know we're talking like a million dollars you know we're talking more than just a couple hundred thousand dollars we're talking about some, some serious money for the community that can be used for uh you know community development like improving access to fiber uh doing drainage projects you know uh, underground drainage or you know things like that and then there is uh, the franchise potential uh, from the from the energy uh, utility cells that they will be serving the project electrically, but uh, we we have our franchise fee there, and we'll be working uh, with an agreement on that. So I can't tell you exactly how much money that's coming in, 
but it's uh, we we're working hard to get as much as we can from the for the community more than just you know they they all come in and say well we're providing uh, these jobs okay yeah uh, but we can't guarantee where everybody lives uh, so we're 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 asking for some commitment social commitment from this company to help the city of West Memphis directly and. Uh, that's a uh, work still in progress, but uh, we're, we're being very firm that we want some benefits from this. That's beautiful. Now, I hope if that helps a little bit. I wish I could tell so, you more. But. So, Councilwoman Muhammad, this is Bob Atkins. Yes, um, I, I, I think what you're asking is, is what the passage of this resolution, what, what would that mean for the city and what does it mean for the project? And and really what what the resolution is like like ward said it's a non-binding agreement but it would just provide assurances to the project that you know the city is committed to working with them for the project and that city council is not going to approve or not going to hinder that development in any way so that's really what the the, the intent of the resolution is for right i know we're only talking about from the city I know we're only talking about the resolution today and trying to get it passed, but if all of these things were to come into fruition, uh, about how many jobs would it provide for citizens in the city or the metropolitan area, city in particularly? And can you tell me basically where this development may be located? Okay, the, there uh, there'll be about 300 jobs uh, provided, op job, uh, opportunities from this project. And the Bollinger property, right behind Coca-Cola. I'm sorry, I didn't right hear behind the Coca -Cola. Half. Okay, Mayor McClinton asked the question. It'd be located uh, right behind the Coca-Cola company, right down on. Yes, sir. It will be in. Yes, it will be in the city limits. Now, about one more question, uh, because I've got to vote on this. I want to be accurate. Um, pay range starting at. I don't know that offhand. Uh, it is a very technical. Uh, operation, and I, I it's safe to say it's going to be well above average, but I, I don't have the exact number. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Atkins, I know we're not going to be selling the electricity, but we'll receive the franchise fees. Can you touch on the other resources that the city will be offering and how that's going to work out to um, everyone's advantage? Yes. So, as part of this deal, the 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 utility would be providing water service to to this facility. Um, there will also be uh, so there'll be fresh water service that we treat, but there will also be they want to take effluent out of the wastewater plant to to use for part of their process. Um, there will also be revenue from uh, the wastewater return of both water sources and there will also be revenue from fiber optic service that we're going to provide to the to the project and then as Ward said there is significant financial benefit from uh, from other tax sources that we'll be receiving from the project as well uh, and they've also asked us to provide 10 megawatts of power, which would make them a, a solid electrical customer. This is outside of uh, their energy agreement. Okay. Can you touch on the, again, they're going to be a rather large user of water. Uh, how does that affect our aquifer in any way? No, because they're asked, we, we, we have dealt with a number of companies like this and they all need a lot of water and our first comment to them is we will not provide you domestic water we will not provide you any water any of our portable potable water the water that we we provide to our citizens the the option that we've always proposed is we will divert the discharge from our sanitary sewer treatment plant the water that's been treated and is discharged into the Mississippi River, we will divert that to your project and you can use that. 
Now, you will have to pay for the forest main and the pumping station. You will have to pay us a monthly fee. But the water, the majority of the water that we're, post, we're offering to provide them is reprocessed water from the sewage treatment plant. Now, if they need additional water, we have proposed to them that they, they sink their water wells on their site. Now, I've checked with the uh, uh, Groundwater Institute and the University of Memphis with uh, the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality in the Arkansas Natural Resource Commission on the aquifers. And there's three that they can choose from. One is the what we call the Mississippi aquifer. That's the one the farmers use, and it's constantly recharged by the Mississippi River. Um, and that's the easiest, most accessible one. There has a high iron, iron content. And anybody that's driven by, any farmer doing a pivot irrigation and the water splashes up against the building, you can see it's orange. Uh, but the next, uh, the next aquifer is the Memphis aquifer. Memphis, and it spreads out across four states. And it would be uh, probably their best choice. It's a little deeper than the Mississippi aquifer, but it's not as deep as the West Memphis aquifer. We go down to a third aquifer that's about 1,500 feet deep. But we don't draw from the Memphis aquifer, uh, and it would be our recommendation that if they need more water, they use the Memphis aquifer and the uh, Groundwater Institute tells me Memphis pulls out 100 million gallons a day. Any water they pull, this project pulls out of that aquifer won't impact anybody. And um, the, uh, the state agrees with that, um, mm -hmm. that that would be a good aquifer. So it would not impact us anyway because they won't be drawing from our aquifer. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, Ward. And Bob, I, yeah. I heard Councillor Cat mention that they would not be buying electrical power from the city of West Memphis. So does that mean that Entergy is going to supply them? Yes. Okay. And why can we not do that? Why can't the city do that? Okay, uh, hey, so I'll let them answer that, but that's, that's, too it's too big for West Memphis to uh, provide that. So they said, look, we got this project, but only if you let us supply the electricity. And we've had, you know, the mega site set up the same way, that they would be the, the supplier. So it's not ideal. We don't like it. But that's why the franchise fee will help offset that for us. And the company has asked for us to provide 10 megawatts of power, so we'll get a little bit there. So. Um, that's what the franchise fee will help compensate us for not being able to serve that. Thank you. Bob, you have anything? <coughs> oh, we have one uh, more question. No, that, that, that's right. And I did want to say the scenario that Ward described wherein uh, if they do uh, drop a well into one of the aquifers, the utility would also be receiving revenue from the the wastewater of those wells we would take that wastewater back and there would be a that would be an additional revenue source for the utility and the city we also have one more question gentlemen councilman muhammad all right this is to our city attorney and of course i'm all for growth and development coming into our cities and providing jobs and better opportunities for people especially in west memphis but in the uh, entire metropolitan area this is to our city attorney and i know this uh, resolution that we're looking at here is, is to kind of help secure that company asking from a legal point of view, are we safe going into this type of, a, of an agreement? Sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a resolution which expresses an intent to move forward in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not binding. It's not like an ordinance. It's not right. law. <laughs> so it, it doesn't, I mean, it's not something that binds the city but it does express the intent to move forward and not to, you know, uh, not 
go forward with the project. Why there's no obligations? On no our obligation. Part here. No. Mm -hmm. okay. no, I touch on the fact that it's another the ag city. No way you're liable. The company's one hundred percent responsible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. There's no problem with with. We're not in any trouble by signing a resolution like this. They can't hold us to, to anything. It's just an intent to move forward. Mm -hmm. I think, like Ward said previously, it's been done a bunch in the past right. when we've done pilot projects. They have to show that they can move forward too to uh, their lenders. Uh, you know, everybody's got lenders typically, and uh, it, it shows good faith uh, on our part to move it forward as well. Right, I, I really feel the way you do, but I just really wanted you to give us an answer from a legal point of view mm -hmm. for the audience and for the minute's sake. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, were there any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, can I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Will you get a resolution and number, please? Res Resolution number three zero 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 three zero zero zero. That resolution number is three thousand. I think that may be an ordinance number. Um, are we up to three thousand on resolution? No, we're not. I don't think so. I don't have mine in front of me. Let's see. A resolution I'm going to say is going to be the twenty three hundred. Yeah, the resolution. This resolution. You said resolution number. Uh, I don't think so. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ward. I'm going to sign out now. Thank you. I, I think uh, if I'm being corrected by the city clerk, it's 2299. Yeah, because ordinance, the last ordinance was 2673 and resolutions were less. So. Yeah, they were less. I think that was a typo from yeah, two weeks ago. Two, two, nine, nine. Resolution number 2299. Two, two, nine, nine. The resolution number is corrected 2299. Two, nine, nine. All right. 01 City Attorney. 01 is an <clears throat> ordinance to amend ordinance number 2426, authorizing <coughs> aldermen and members of the City Council to purchase services from Mayor Marco McClendon and for other purposes. All right, if I may, um, the auditors are still present. While they're here, let's uh, ask council to consider suspending and place it on a second reading. Uh, and then in next week, uh, we can make the final decision to let them know. Okay. So I'll make a motion to suspend the rules, place it on a second reading. So moved. All right, bye. Aye. Opposed? See turn. This is an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2426, authorizing aldermen and members of the city council to purchase services from Mayor Marco McClendon and for other purposes. It's read for a second time, and it'll be back in two weeks on the agenda for final disposition. Mayor, Councilor Cat, uh, yes. you had made a comment earlier about doing a revision to the I was going ordinance. to offer an amendment before your final vote, uh, which just strictly says that Mayor McClendon's businesses do not do business with the city of West Memphis, four out of five, and only one does very occasionally. Uh, but in order to make sure the public and everybody else is, is very comfortable with it, it's just simply we'll have an amendment that says that no work or no funds will be paid to the company without council's prior approval. So if, if there's something that one of his businesses is going to do with the city, he will have to bring it to you first for full disclosure, so it'll be completely transparent. It'll be, I think the citizens will be better for it and, and the mayor will not be criticized for it. So, so would we, it'll be full disclosure. Would we need to vote on that revision? Before you pass, before yes. You pass. I'll word it just a shade differently and give everybody a copy of it before we have our meeting next Thursday. Thank you. But I think it's a check and balance. And I want the mayor and the city. Yeah, and I wanted to give you a little more information on that. Thank you. Actually, I didn't feel that I needed to add my businesses in here because they have absolutely nothing, nothing to do with the city. But when it was approved, when I was an alderman, mm -hmm. they just want you all to prove now that I am the mayor. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, with my, 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 my company, don't do business with the city in a way. They just wanted <coughs> me to add it. For what reason, I don't know. But well, I mean, it would be understandable. Well, yeah. well I mean, just for the, the uh, public's sake to know that there was nothing that 
I was pushing okay. on the city. They just went all my business. And I, and I explained to them, like, why do that? It has absolutely nothing to do with I am the mayor. So we're understanding that. Mm -hmm. okay. In all fairness, do we do all of our city employees as we are doing the mayor, making sure that whatever transactions are are uh, done, that every one who works for the city, that bill or whatever transaction comes before, city council before is paid, do we do all everybody like that? I, so why are we doing this particular person that way? Because of the From position? From my standpoint, there's no check and balance. It's the mayor's company, the mayor approves payment, the mayor writes check. The other process is the purchasing agent is gonna see anything that any previous vendor does for this city. They're right. gonna approve it. It's gonna go to the department head. They're gonna approve it. Then it'll finally get to the mayor for him to approve it. There are multiple checks and balances. This is just the one check and balance we would have because he is the mayor. Hmm. No one oversees the mayor. Right, I was just thinking since it does go through a, a series of hands, why do we city council members need to approve it? That's I yeah, guess all we can the discuss that whenever I guess we can discuss that when we, whenever we get to the bottom sure. line. Yes, okay. ma'am. Thank you. It's been read twice and it'll be on the agenda for the last reading in two weeks. Well, no, I'm sorry. Next week. Next week. So we got city council <laughs> next week, so yeah. Because we have to we'll go to through it then. And like I said, I apologize for being asked to disclose my other business when it have nothing to do with it, but that's just what they asked me to do. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to follow what they asked me to do. All right. I have permission request for the mayor to sign in the, an American Ramp Company source well build agreement, but I'm asking you all to table that indefinitely until we get everything worked out. So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's passed. It's table. All right. Um, committee reports. Uh, budget. I know it was short, but yes, budget did meet. Uh, Ms. Perry brought in the revenues from Southland uh, A and P uh, sales tax. Also prepared us for the training session we had this morning from nine to twelve. Uh, we will have another one probably in about two weeks. Uh, so for the ones who weren't able to attend this morning, please come uh, bring your laptops with you. Uh, there are several tutorials that are going to help you be able to go through that accounting software. And the gentleman who presented that program today is going to send those to Ms. Perry so we can forward them to you. There are also some tutorials within the system itself. Once you get there and start playing with it, you'll find them. And it's just a, a good learning, helps you get through this software a little quicker. But once it becomes effective, hopefully August 1st, uh, you'll have any information you need to know at your fingertips current to that day. So. Also, uh, Councilman Kidd, I want to add, if you all haven't seen that program, and I know some, some of you all was in the meeting today, it's an awesome program. It, it's, no, it's, no, it's not gonna be in the one wondering what is that, uh, we can't find this. It's right there in front of your face. So I advise everyone to get in and get the training that's necessary to have that. So it will be no problem if you talk to your constituents. Uh, a and P. Director Jackson. I think everyone has the full minutes from our last meeting, uh, June 17th. Uh, I'll just hit some of the highlights here, which um, Mr. Cat talked about the A and P collections, but wanted to point out that uh, we were, our collections were up 44% over last year at this time. Very pleased with that. We had a couple of funding requests. We had uh, Clark Promotions, Mr. Annie Ruth Clark addressed the commissions of, for a funding request for a fundraising program. There was no motions made that request <coughs> died due to a lack of motion. Same thing happened with the 2024 Outdoor Ink Grit and Grind. It was a uh, gravel grind bicycle ride, uh, but the gentleman failed to show at the meeting, so that also failed uh, or died with the lack of emotion. Uh, I can give you an update that we got from our architects on the remodel at the Civic Center. Uh, all the designs are done. 
um, they did ask the commission to approve <coughs> the project designs and uh, we hope that uh, all the regulatory and uh, city sign-offs are going to happen by the end of July and hopefully we can get this bid out first of August or sometime in August which will mean that we will be at least partially or completely closed at the Civic Center for a while going to try to make this as least inconvenient as we can for our customers um, shift them over to the auditorium if we can uh, we had uh, Mayor McClendon come and talk to us about uh, the pump track and the bike park that uh, he had on the agenda here, and there's some details in here. Uh, the commission did agree to help with that project uh, if and when it does go forward. And um, I made the announcement, of, but I do want to thank all the, the departments from the city for their help with Freedom Fest. Uh, it was on June 28th at Tilden Rogers, the police, the fire, utility, street, literally every department helped with that. Uh, it was hot. Uh, I still think we have some of the best fireworks around, had a good crowd, had uh, food trucks, all of our food trucks were registered with the city, had their uh, vendors permits, and all were very pleased with the amount of business that they did. So. And if, aren't any questions you have all the details on the report here in, or in front of you thank you were there other any other commission or committees like the park, we, park the parks commission um were to meet on this past tuesday <clears throat> excuse me but we did not have a quorum we did just talk about a few things and hopefully at the next uh meeting we'll have a um enough people to have a meeting. I would like to say thank you to everybody. I know you're going to uh, come in on the ribbon cutting on yesterday, but everything was just really wonderful. And we, we are very thankful for Mr. Russell Jones and the committee and the wonderful job they're doing. And thank you, Mayor McClinton, for making those uh, invaluable appointments. Thank you. Uh, planning, uh, Mr. Chad Bowman, you come up and give some information about Something new that he got going on, I think it's going to be real good and informative to the people of West Memphis. Good afternoon, members of the council. Um, I would like to make an announcement about a new app that we have. It's really not an app. It's a phone number that you can text code violations to, and it will come directly to our department, to our code enforcement clerk, and also to my office or to my email. And then if you find junk cars, our police officer that helps with towaways and cars for abandoned vehicles or vehicles that are in disrepair or inoperable, it'll go directly to him. So basically, I would like everybody to hold up your right hand. I am now swearing you in as official code enforcement officer. <laughs> no, no, just joking, just joking. But what this does is, this new hotline will and quintessentially help you all to help us with code enforcement. So if you see it, you can report it. So the number that we use to text is 870-878-WMEM. WMEM is actually 9636. So what you would type into your phone is code violations to that number. And then it'll come up and it'll give you several options. I think the options are grass, weeds, cars, and other violations. Once you type that in, it'll ask for your name. And then it'll prompt you, after you type in your name, it'll prompt you to get the address of the location where you see the issue. Then it'll prompt you to either take a picture or do a description, and then it'll close out by telling you thank you for participating and we'll get back with you. That message automatically goes to my email and our system, and then it goes to our code clerk's email. We then take that information and send it to our code officer for that location. Something else we're doing in code enforcement that'll be a little different. Every day, our code enforcement officer would focus on one primary district to work in. So Monday, they will be in one district, on Tuesday in another district, Wednesday, so forth, so we could do more work in one area on one day and have more impact in that particular area, and we could address it more strategically. So I just wanted to make this announcement, so I'll pass out the flyer to everyone and also give it to the public. Even our high school students that are working with the city can help us be code enforcement. You know, if you see junk cars, tall weeds, abandoned houses, 
And, and there's a, a prompt for other code issues. So the other code issues would be where you would put, like, if you see an abandoned home or see a contractor working without a permit. So this is very user friendly, and I encourage everyone to use it. Thank you. It's active Thank you. now. Is it active now? Yeah. It is active now. It went online uh, Monday, so we're ready to use it. We've already got you one response over here. Hey, Doug, <laughs> you took care of it. Didn't you? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oh, for the for public, just repeat the number one more time before you take your seat. For the public, the number, just repeat the number. Yeah, the number is 870-878-WMEM. So and, and the going joke is I made a little jingle. Think of it as 870 <laughs> If, if you see something that needs to be fixed, dial 870-878-9636. Okay. Thank you. Is that on the city website? Uh, yes, it, it is. is. Okay. Uh, we'll get it on the website. It's on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Uh, we're going to go down to uh, presentations uh, by the mayor, which I didn't have in the presentations. Uh, I do have some announcements that I want to inform you all on. First of all, our Freedom Fest, like uh, Mr. Jim Jackson said, was a great event for our city. It's back growing like it was. And just thankful that everyone that came out and was a part of it. I think that our two events for the Freedom Fest as well as the Juneteenth event were two great events for our city. And I'm looking forward to that growing and moving forward. On yesterday, I'm so honored because we had such a great event at 3 o'clock at the Park and Recreation uh, Building where <laughs> An idea that our young people came up, came up with three years ago to do something for our youth in our city was an inclusive part. And actually, we actually was able to see an ideal or a vision become a reality. And I want to thank this whole, this whole entire council for the part they played in this, as well as all of the city department here, the Park and Recreation Department, Fire Department, Police Department, Utility Department, Sanitation. The whole nine yards, all of them came together, and our kids got to actually see government at its finest. We worked together, and we was able to cut the ribbon on our inclusive park. And the inclusive park is a park designed for kids with autism, Down syndrome, physical, mental, intellectual disabilities, uh, blindness, sensory, just the whole nine yards, one of the 13 disabilities. And it was so many kids that was out there. They really enjoyed themselves. Um, if they was on a wheelchair, they can get on their equipment. You know, they, they had zip lines out there. It was a whole nine yards. And for those who weren't able to get, I know you all probably had some other things going on, but I know the ones that were there, they really seen their joy that you all helped to bring into our young people's lives. So I really want to thank uh, Russell Jones, uh, Curlin Anthony, the whole entire staff at the Park and Recreation, the, uh, the uh, Park Department, Commission Department. Uh, it was just a great day for our city, and I was that was proud. That was one proud moment for me as mayor to be able to pull this off, listening to our kids. And I think our kids mean so much to our city. And uh, if you see, looking to our audience, you see so many of our young people who worked in our summer jobs program. I just want you all to stand up. We're going to give you all a round of applause. So many of these young people that worked all over our city, they've done a great job. I mean, from the fire department, the police department. Actually, I seen some things that they were doing the police department. They were actually showing them how when gunshots are on the ground, where they can put their cone and different things. You know, the newspaper done a big story on our people at the utility and the fire department. If you all see all about fire hydrants, they are now painted red. You can see where they at. You can recognize them. <laughs> And the ones that need to be repaired, they already marked them. I think, would you all paint them blue? Well, they may, they, they, it's a certain color that they are painted. I just want to thank all of you all for what y'all done for our city. We needed that, and this program just shows that it does work. And we're going to hear just a little bit later from you all, so I just want to say thank you all. You all said that I'm going to win a sale, but <laughs> yeah. I just want to thank you all for the effort that you all have done. Also, um, Next Wednesday, if this council can do it, Wednesday at 4 o'clock, I would like to have a work session meeting with you all. Uh, actually, we're going to have uh, Ryan Bowman and Michael McBride that's coming here. 
to answer any questions. And also, I want to give you all some more details on some things I've been working on and any questions that you all may have. But we can go from there. But it's a work session to council. Ask you all next, the next Wednesday at 4 o'clock, if you all will be there. Um, you know, there was a, a, I had a very tough decision that I had to make that, um, that was very key for me. I had an opportunity where, <coughs> I'm not going to talk about what happened in the past. I had an opportunity to make sure that I addressed some issues that we needed in the city. And I thought about salary, uh, salary surveys that need to have been done. I thought about when Councilman Hope talked to me about someone knowing about insurance and different things like that. We needed a whole total new overhaul of our HR department. And I said, with all the needs that a lot of you all came to me and asked me about, I took all those things into consideration. And I said, I need to make sure that I found the individual that would be able to handle all of that responsibility. I found a young lady that had over 24 years of experience who worked for TJ Maxx in HR, Family Dollar, Hino, international paper and was currently working for Walmart. And I said to myself, golly, how in the world can I afford this person? <laughs> but God is good. She, not only did she have all that experience, she is SHRM certified. So we ain't looking for the one that's coming in talking about they're going to get SHRM certified. She already is SHRM certified for the bachelor's in public administration from the University of Arkansas. Area expertise is in employee relation, organizational development, compensation, uh, benefits, training and development, recruitment and retention, employer labor laws that we deal with all the time, and helps with many startup companies. She um, has done a lot. I think all she has done is, is HR, and she's very qualified. And when we had our recruiter here, I'd never been in the room where everybody unanimously voted and said that we need this person. No, we needed her, and, and you know, we, we, we got her, and I thank God for her. And at this time, I want to introduce you all to you all and mine, the city of West Memphis, new HR director, Ms. Yvonne Carr. Will you come to the mic? Good afternoon. I just want to introduce you to the council, and she'll be the, the young lady that will be leading our city forward when they're handling many of the issues. Because, like I said, when I know me, I hate to, I'm not calling you out, but Councilman Kay, we talked a lot about uh, cyber surveys and mm -hmm. different things like that. She has them, that tool as well as I know Councilman Hope talked a lot about our insurance, and we may have some different options and, you know, looking at some things. So she carries all that and many of the other questions that we ask. Someone just going to have stability and run it like it needs to be ran. So I want to introduce you all. Did you want to What a answer? great introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I look forward to working with all of you all. Um, like Mark, I couldn't say anything more than Marco said. I do have many years of HR experience uh, in various industries. So um, I think I remember working with Mr. Prune. We did Dale Carnegie. Um, mm -hmm. At the, at the university, at the college down here. But I look forward to working with you all um, and getting to know each of you and um, seeing how we can move the city forward. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Have you, have you always lived in um, Ms. Carr? Ms. Ms. Carr, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, it's me right here. Oh. <laughs> have you always lived in the city of West Memphis? Um, I've, no. I'm always lived in Crittenden County, except for when I went right, to school. I, I knew some cars at one time. There were three young men that I was um, so very, very fond of who would really enjoy <coughs> that park that we, uh, are you related to Jacqueline Carr? Are you in that family? No. Okay, I was just wondering because you look kind of like them. Gotcha. No, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to move down to citizen request. Mayor, if I may. Uh, and I don't know if Mr. Bowman needs to come back up. The TDBG statement says it's going to be approved today. Yeah, uh, Miss, uh, we don't count on the agenda. Okay, we're going to add it to the agenda. Okay. All right. We're going to move. Well, it's down. Well, yeah. We're going to move the system request. And we have uh, Miss Vicki Robson. We're going to ask you to come forward. Okay. 
Ms. Robinson is one of our JP members and a former city council member. And she know we normally do five minutes and get your name and address. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, as the mayor stated, I'm Vicki Robertson. I'm not here in my elected capacity today. I'm, I'm here in the, the, the capacity of the job that pays the bills. I'm here as the executive director of DREAD, and um, I'm familiar with most of you, and most of you know DREAD is a, an affordable housing program here in the city, and we've been around for about 30 years. I'm here to talk to the uh, council about an ordinance that you passed in regards to utility uh, services, the charges and fees. Uh, what you have, well, it still hadn't made it to everybody yet, but the, the council passed an ordinance about minimum fees for water and sewer, and we have several rental properties that are, when they're vacant, we keep electric only on so that we can have the burglar alarm on in the, in the units, and they've plugged the water meters. But uh, we're being charged for water and sewer, and we can't use water. We're not using water. The water meter is, is plugged, and we're also being charged for sewer, and sewer is based upon the amount of water you're using. If you're not using any water, I don't know how you're using any sewage. Uh, for example, the first bill that you have on your packet, our electric bill was only $7.58, but the water and sewer was over $30. Hmm. So the services that I did use were $7. What I didn't use was $30. And I don't think that that was a, a fair assessment. I would like to ask the council, and I've uh, attached a copy of the two ordinances to this that I'm referring to, because I went before the Utility Commission this morning. And uh, so I've already spoken with them, and they're saying that they are just following the ordinances that were approved by the council. Um, I, I'm asking that the council would reconsider that policy. I realize that, that you've got new meters in, there are fees, but I think that's an observant amount when you say $30 for services you're not using and only $7 for services that you are using. And you might think that $30 a month is not a lot, but if you have as many properties that you have come vacant during the course of the year, $30 can add up over time. And uh, the yeah, general manager and the utility me. commissioners uh, that I met with this morning were saying that they understood and they could see, especially they could see why we were being charged a sewer fee when there's obviously no sewer usage at all. If they were saying that there was a charge for the meter base for the water, but even if you charge the water and didn't charge the sewer, because the sewer is seventeen dollars of this bill, the water was thirteen, and we didn't use either one of them. And we have the uh, utility general manager online, uh, Mr. Atkins. Yes. Yes. Uh, did you hear Miss Robinson's uh, question? I, I did. So, so this is a function of, and and I had talked with. Uh, We've talked, I've talked to several council members about this before. So basically, this is a function of the utility following the city ordinance. So in the past, ordinance 2560, I think it's 2566, I don't have it right in front of me, but the, uh, there is a minimum charge for a meter on that ordinance. And then the new ordinance would, just went into effect in June. The, the rates increased for that. Well, the utility was not charging the meter charge that was listed in both ordinances when there was no usage on the meter. So my position as the general manager of the utility was that we were going to follow the ordinance. So the reason there's a meter charge on the on the ordinance is that the utility has incurred the cost of the meter, the service is there and it's available. The problem is, is it wasn't contemplated in, in either ordinance for a disconnect fee. So there's only one disconnect option for a, for a customer and that's, and when they want to be reconnected, so we just disconnect the meter, but when they want to be reconnected, it's a $750 reconnection fee for a tapping fee. That's the only option that we have. So the utility is in the process of updating those policies 
It will be in front of the utility commission next month. I, I do understand where Mrs. Robertson is in that, um, in that she's not using any services. The services are available. That's why there's a minimum charge. So the option would be to, to disconnect the meter but it's not really a viable option for her to pay another $750 to get it reconnected. So that's the purpose of designing another reconnect fee, not a tapping fee. So we should have that in front of the utility commission for approval by next month, and that will alleviate this problem. But the reason that she was charged is the utility is gonna follow the city ordinance, and that's what we were doing in terms of billing. All right, Mr. Atkins, uh, Council Member Muhammad. Now, are, are you coming to try and get this amended or, or get all these other charges taken off? And just because everything that I'm looking at here in the ordinance, it does specify water rates. It doesn't say anything about any of the other charges that you have here on your bill. Are you asking us to make an amendment to the bills that you've incurred up to this point for water only? No, I'm, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Muhammad. Um, I, I couldn't understand your question. Could you please Okay, I, I'm talking, I guess I was talking to you and her at the same time. I was asking uh, Mrs. Robinson if she's coming for us to uh, try to make an amendment to the bills that she has incurred up to this point to charge her for water only and not the other charges that are on here. I know you said that you all, the Utility Commission is working on something now to maybe include these charges for later. But what I'm asking Mrs. Robinson, she has come before, uh, so graciously come before the council today, uh, asking us to help her. So this is what I'm trying to ask her. I hope you all are understanding what I'm saying. What do you want us to do, Mr. Atkins? And I want you to hear as well what Mrs. Robinson want the council body to do for her today. Uh, yes. Today, I'm, I'm asking for the council to reconsider both fees, but in the, at the minimum, at least reconsider the sewer fee, because it's impossible to have a sewer fee if you're using absolutely no water. But I'd like to have both if I could get the water and the sewer, but I won't be greedy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and if possible, when the council amends their ordinance to include something that will cover the sewer in the future, because if you're not using any water, you're definitely not using any soil. Right. So what, what, what does this body conclude? What, what well, the ordinance, everything that I read, no, we'll it says water rates. It doesn't specify any of these other charges. Right. It's right. simply saying water. And I guess Mr. Atkins was explaining to us since the <coughs> meter is there, we've got to charge her something for use of the meter. Is that what you were saying, Mr. Atkins? So the, the sewage, the sewer rate is in a different ordinance. Um, I, I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but it's like it's in a 900 series. It's like 915 or 971, somewhere around there. And that lays out that the, 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 sewage, the sewer rate is 132% of the water bill. And so that's why there's a sewage charge. So if you wanted to amend that, you would have to amend that ordinance as well. I, I would I would say it, it's a it's an issue, and and what I would what I would like to do is for to, to come up with a recommendation, have the utility commission approve the recommendation next month, and then we'll present that to city council, and then there will be a, a different rate structure that we can address this problem. If we change the ordinance as it stands right now, there's going to be additional consequences. So in, in this instance, we don't charge a sewer rate on irrigation meters because there is no way for that water to enter back into the wastewater system. But in this instance, the, 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 that service is there and available. So the only way to avoid that would be to remove the service, remove the meter. And so we need to come up with a different rate structure so that we don't impact all these other customers. Right, I do understand that right now Mrs. Robinson is, is standing before us and she's wanting us to take some kind of action. I'm sure that's why she came uh, to try to get something done about all these other char charges. How many houses are you servicing? 
uh, I have different amounts that are vacant at different times. Right. So it so varies. But on average, I'll probably have number. about four a month. Right there. Mm -hmm. Are these all, all the ones that you had? For no. This? Okay, I just this is just ex two. examples. Uh -huh. Right. I think what she's wanting us to do, uh, Mayor McClinton, City Attorney, uh, is to try to make some kind of amendment so she won't have to pay all of these charges, just pay the water services only. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what you're asking us. Yes, and in, in the interim, since you're, the Utility Commission is considering making some recommendations to the Council, I would be perfectly happy with uh, letting you get your new ordinance in place and just make it retroactive and the Utility Company can issue a credit to my bill in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and from a legal standpoint, I would prefer not to rush into mm -hmm. some decision that's going to have consequences that we may not know what will happen as a result. There's going to be other people besides you Hi. that are affected by this, I assume. And so I think I it, it's I'm important to have the Utility Commission talk about what their recommendation is. And if they want to make that retroactive, then that's certainly something y'all can vote on. But to me, that would be the proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. In the that's meantime, satisfying. have you paid these bills? Yes. You have, you've already paid them. Paid my bill. Yes, yes ma'am. Right. You feel it'd be appropriate that we actually have a meter charge then you'd have a water separate separate line item. I think yeah. distinguishing each line item is going to make it a little clearer for everybody. Yes. So okay, and you're right. You shouldn't have a sewer charge. You didn't use water. Right. No. right. That's right. So Ms. Robinson, we'll come back. What, what is this? We'll wait for utility, and then we'll get back in touch with you, so you'll know what what we're doing on this end. Okay. And possibly issue you, um, you know, give you a dis. A credit. Thank like you that. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Thank you, City Attorney. <clears throat> also, the next time of business, this is where we have Ms. Marilyn Felix speaking on the CDBG. Final statement 2024. Is yeah, I honestly thought that she would be speaking on the way the funds were dispersed or something like that that we've had in the past. Okay. So they just, it wasn't on the agenda to approve it at the top. So I would just, we'll make sure to get overlooked. Yeah. No. Call for Ms. Felix. Good afternoon, Council. Um, you should have the final statement of our CDBG um, entitlement program, final statement, and community development objectives and projected use of funds. Uh, the total amount for our 2024 allocation is Two hundred forty-five thousand two fifty-nine. Now, this is a decrease from 2023 uh, by thirteen thousand eight hundred three dollars. Um, and you can read for yourself. I want. I won't read all of the allocations, uh, but they are there for you to look at for this year for 2024. Mayor, if I may make a motion that we approve the report as submitted. Thank you. A second. I, I don't have a copy of it. It's right. probably Where? here. It was handed out just a little earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were there, what, two or three public hearings? There were two public hearings. There was a re comment period of 30 days. We right. did not receive any comments during that period. Right. Uh, one of the public hearings we did have attendees and we made a note of all of the concerns that they had and they have been put into the annual action plan thank you second we got a motion and second to approve all the what about aye. Aye. opposed it passes thank you thank you Ms. Phillips. thank you Ms. Phillips. <laughs> all right we have next up Mr. Joshua Smith, come forward. These young people right here are part of our summer jobs program as well. I ask you that you give your name and your address and we give five minutes. You said address what again? Give your name and your address. Okay. My, my name is Joshua Smith. Uh, I'm a senior at the Academies of West Memphis. My goal today here is to highlight the need for a new firehouse, station number one, and a police precinct 
Before I get started today, I want to thank both our police and fire uh, fighters for making sure to keep our city safe and peaceful. As I look around our growing town of West Memphis, I see a place of progress, resilience, and community spirit. However, with growth comes the responsibility to ensure that all our vitals, service, and equipment to meet the needs of our residents. First, I would like to discuss the need for a new firehouse number one. I have been fortunate to be a dream firefighter with uh, Station One for the past two years, and I've, it's been a great opportunity, and I'm grateful for the dedication and hard work that our firefighters who have operated for, from this station since 1955. However, as uh, we stand here today in 2024, the demand of the fire and emergency services have evolved. The firehouse is no longer able to support the modern needs for our firefighters and community due to the repairs needed to the ceiling, roof, and electricity, and lack of space to store equipment that needs to be sheltered. The fire station equipment is needed, needing replacement, and the interior space are needed to be restructured to accommodate personnel. Our brave men and women spend 48 hours per shift in their building, in this building for their families to serve our community. And they serve, and they deserve a safe, comfortable, and well-equipped environment to work in. By investing in a new firehouse, this is also an investment to the well-being of our firefighters. A new fire station will provide better living quarters, training areas, health uh, resources, and space to which essentials for maintaining the physicals and mental well-being of our firefighters. Their job is demanding and dangerous and deserves nothing less than the best support we provide. Next, I would like to discuss the need for a new police precinct. And as I'm talking about the police precinct, there would be pictures of the, uh, the, the current one that we have right now. The police precinct that we have right now is currently one of the oldest buildings in West Memphis, which was a bank before I was born. If I was visiting West Memphis, I would not have, would not have guessed that the current building was a police station. The exterior looks depressing and old, which will make people think the interior is just as bad. Inside the precinct, it lacks space to store files, up-to-date bathrooms to meet all the needs. The current air conditioning unit leaks, which causes the ceiling to have water come from it and it smells like mildew and mold. Our officers and police staff are housed in this building and they work a minimum of 40 hours or more per week. This is their home away from home. Each officer has taken an oath to serve and protect the city of West Memphis, and I believe we should honor their dedication and commitment by giving them a new police precinct when our officers enter the precinct, they should not have to worry about their safety and health. They should feel comfortable and safe. This building is also known as a safe haven for those in need, but the exterior and interior doesn't show it. A new precinct would instill dignity and honor of our current officers and police staff. It will show them that the city of West Memphis cares about their safety and well-being. I also believe that it would attract more people to become police officers and help equip our city with the, uh, with the people to assist with making the citizens of West Memphis feel safe. I will, I will also allow our city to upgrade technology which could help assist officers with crime. Before I end my presentation, there's a video that's gonna pop up of water coming from the ceiling. In conclusion, we can't keep patching up old buildings and expect it to hold. 
Our first responders deserve the best the city of West Memphis has to offer. A new fire station, house number one, and police precinct is a statement about our commitment priorities. It shows that we are up to date with our system and technology and that we value the safety and welfare of our first responders and residents. It is a commitment to the future of West Memphis, ensuring that as our community grows, we are prepared to meet its needs. Let us come together and support the vital causes, recognizing that by investing in our first responders, we are investing, investing in the security and prosperity of beloved West Memphis. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Kenan Whitfield. Good afternoon, Mayor McClendon and uh, members of the council. I want to first thank you for this opportunity to allow me and the other youth to represent on behalf of the youth of West Memphis and, of course, uh, the outreach director, Teresa Bo, for allowing us this opportunity. Um, I stand before you today to speak on behalf of the youth for what the mayor asked us about this program, Summer uh, Empowerment Program. What would make the youth want to come back to West Memphis after college or even going to, into the workforce? Where would keep us here? And, you know, Mayor Marco has done a great job of trying to elevate and revitalize the city for what it is here, but also to try to bring new things and new life into the city. And he always has a saying that uh, while the youth is a small population, we are 100% of the future. And with that, I want to propose that we involve more internships and job opportunities for our youth. While I know there is child labor laws in place that to where the <coughs> students can't work, you know, full-time jobs, and while some bosses and workplaces won't want to have students, you know, because they have busy schedules and they don't have the opportunity to teach them, like, you know, someone who's just come straight out of college with a degree as such, like city council members. Um, but having the opportunity to come in with work experience now is required in majority of workplaces outside of West Memphis. And so you have to start in your home place. And my home place is West Memphis, Arkansas. I was born a Blue Bedevil. I go to, uh, I just graduated from the academies of West Memphis. And this program has given me the opportunity to, you know, get some workplace experience. But this program only started about two years ago. I only had the opportunity to work in it for two years. And while it's a great program, it only lasts around six weeks. And while, you know, we have lots of um, crime rates, you know, a lot of places don't like to come here because they like to say we're, our city is too dangerous. I've lived here all my life and I've, I've felt safe due to our department heads at uh, the police department, fire department, and the laws that you have put in place. And so I believe just allowing more internships and job opportunities for the youth will allow them to have the opportunity to instill values into themselves. You know, I grew up with my uh, Aunt Teresa Bell where punctuality was everything, organization was everything. And when I started these summer job programs, I, I took those principles and things that I was, more as I was put into me, into my summer job. And I just believe allowing them to have those opportunities as they're going up, when they get into those workplaces and they say they came from West Memphis, Arkansas, they'll start to be like, hmm, I wonder what they do over there in West Memphis, Arkansas. And it'll allow us to have more work and employment opportunities for our city to better it because we are 100% of the future. And what y'all put into us is what we allow to put out into the world and what the world will put back into West Memphis. I want to thank you for this time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kingston Crate. Good afternoon, Council. I'm Joy Evans. First of all, amongst the youth and Mayor McLennan, I would like to say thank you for giving us the chance to speak amongst the different innovations we believe to see in West Memphis. First, we would like to propose an aquatic center, which we believe would be very community driven and a chance to help empower our youth. Good afternoon. My name is Kingston Creighton. I would first like to thank Ms. Bo, the mayor, and all of you today for allowing us a chance to come and speak about issues in West Memphis. I've lived in West Memphis all of my life, and for as long as I can remember, I've been eager to leave. Many of my peers share the same desire to leave after high school and have no interest in returning. 
The prime reasoning for this is that there is nothing keeping us here anymore. There is a lack of activities and entertainment here in the city. In order to find that entertainment, we have to travel to places such as Memphis or Paragould and Jonesboro. Like a couple of weeks ago, I went to a pool, and so I had to go all the way to Paragould just to use their water center. I love, the, my, I love the mayor's idea of the aquatic center for West Memphis. It'll make it so that we no longer have to travel far links just to enjoy a pool and have fun. Not only will it bring teens entertainment, but it also brings an opportunity for more jobs and a chance for community service hours for the youth. It would also give our local high school a chance to have a swim team. I'm sure no one who lives in West Memphis is unaware of the crime rate and the number of killings there have been recently. There have been five killings that involve teenagers and young adults in West Memphis this year alone that I can think of just off the top of my head. Five lives that have been taken away and ended too soon. Seeing our, peers, seeing our peers get killed hurts us all, whether we knew them or not, it affects all of us. Lots of teens in our community are struggling mentally, and a big part of that is we don't have anything to do. Our youth is following by example of others. They don't know anything more than trying to be in gangs or killing each other or getting involved in things that they shouldn't be in. Our community is struggling, our youth is struggling, and something to do will benefit us. Something like the Aquatic Center will give, things, will give us teens something to do. It will discourage us from doing things that can be harmful and give us something that will help us in the future. And it will encourage them to be positive and beneficial. Something like the Water Center is a start to help our youth. We are the future and it is vital that we don't ignore the issue within our community and within our youth. Thank you for your time. Ms. area Rogers. Good afternoon. My name is Diaria Rogers, and it's an honor to be here today speaking on behalf of the youth within the community. Thank you, Mayor Marco McClendon and City Council for this opportunity. I also want to thank Ms. Teresa Bow for always encouraging us to stand up for what we believe in and fighting for the youth within our community. I was drawn to the idea of implementing a museum. A, mu a museum would be beneficial for students who doesn't know the history of the city. It would allow students to go on local field trips that would assist and gain investments in taking care of our community. Also knowing the history of the city might encourage the youth to stay here rather than leaving after they graduate from high school. It's important to know that our city was founded in 1910 as a logging camp, we're the largest city in Creighton County. We were first known as Bragg's Mill until 1927. The first building built was in 1875, along with the railroad station. We're known for blues, with B.B. King getting his first steady paying gig here in the city. The largest criminal investigation was the West Memphis Three. There were three Native American tribes who settled here on this land. Broadway was the only road to take through Arkansas. We were originally called Hope Field, which was destroyed by a flash flood from the Mississippi River. In conclusion, the former West Memphis City Hall is a historical Manip, uh, I'm sorry, yes. municipal building and would be great for this grand idea of a history museum for the city of West Memphis. Thank you. Taylor Jackson. Good afternoon. My name is Taylor Jackson, and before I get started, I want to thank the mayor and the council for allowing us the opportunity to speak today at this meeting. And I want to say thank you to Ms. Teresa Bow for supporting us and helping us get everything together, such as meetings and also speech preparations. I believe the Aquatic Center can bring a sense of community to West Memphis and make the youth excited about where they live. The justification for not approving new things for West Memphis because of the lack of attendance for what we have now can possibly be solved by strengthening the marketing for all the events that we have here. Examples of where the marketing could have been stronger to the youth are the Blues on Broadway events that happen on Thursdays, which I have attended and I enjoy, the Juneteenth celebration, and the opening of the new Inclusion Park, which I attended. 
Uh, at the inclusion park, I noticed that children were there and it was a good showing of city hall workers there, but there was no teens there. And on the way there, I got a ride from my friend and the people that I was in the car with, they did not know that the opening of the inclusion park was happening. They didn't even know about the remodeling for that park. And the events had a great turnout with adults, seniors, and children, but teens weren't aware of the events taking place. And I believe that if you want to connect to the youth, then you should go where the youth are to grab their attention. Because I agree with the mayor when he states that the youth are 100% of the future because we come back and we feed into this town as the future adults. Ideas that I came up with of strengthening the market are using common social media outlets like TikTok and Instagram. I acknowledge that we do that the city does have an Instagram at this moment and the city's Instagram averages about seven likes each post and it ranges from four to ten depending on the engagement rates. But if we're more vocal about the social media pages and different events that are hosted and we try to share it as much as we can, then we can grow the engagement rates and allow the citizens to be more informed on the events, which will ultimately increase attendance. Uh, I believe that we should promote the events by flyers and current social medias. Um, we should promote the events, events by announcing it during the morning announcements at the schools because I'm sure that if we just get in contact with the people that are over the morning announcements, that's where the teens are. That's where they'll actually hear the things that are going on so we could increase the attendance. And at our school currently, we have a slideshow of daily announcements that's shown in every classroom before school starts, as an example, choir. And it mentioned, and we also have vocal mentions over the intercom. We can email students that attend the West Memphis schools. If we get in contact with the counselors, they let us know everything that's going on, and they even let us know job opportunities that are closer to the summer. So I'm sure that they'll be open to letting us know about citywide events. We can put posters in more prominent areas. I know that we put, like, put posters around places, but most people aren't able to see them. So maybe we could try Big Star, Walmart, Walgreens, or schools around the district. And I acknowledge that I was once a teenager who would state that I couldn't wait to leave West Memphis and I did not want to return. It was until I saw all that this city had to offer that I saw how much potential it had and I wanted to be a part of the development and how to make it better. And Though it may be too late to convince the current young adults that are my age to stay, we can still try to inspire our current children and we can turn, we can turn them into impactful adults in our city. And I believe that where the audience is, is where you follow. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And last, uh, Ms. Joy Evans. She already got up. Well, I, I, want, I want to say, wow, you know, I'm always emotional when they come down to our young people, but did y'all hear what the future is asking of us? We got to get out of this, this political way of thinking and what the older way of thinking is saying, this is our future, this is our right now. And I truly want you all to just hear what they said and, and do anything that we can do to help them. But I'm, I'm, I'm so, my heart is heavy now because I see the changes. And, and when I see a lot of things that goes on within our community, and I said, what do we have for our young people? You know, it's very emotional, it's very touching to me because I know a lot of these families. And I just want the council, along with myself, to just, just take a second look at our future. And we got some very intelligent young people. Y'all send them one more time. I want to ask this young man, will you consider being one of our firefighters in the next year or so? See, we got them right here. Our great people are right here in front of us. So I, I think you all, Ms. Bo, did you want to say something about, I know you? Yeah, come on, Ms. Bo, real quick. Come on. You know? Okay, yes, I can't ask the, the students and I not be uh, present as well and show up. Um, to the councilman, uh, Mayor McClendon, um, we definitely thank you guys, uh, the mayor and I, for this space uh, with this youth. I tell you, 
Um, I was asked the question by Mayor, what did I feel like uh, that the kids, what were some of the takeaways? And I came in last year, I was really new to the program. Now I have worked with students for over 23 years plus. And so that is a passion for me. I thought when I left the school, that was it. But God had a bigger plan for Teresa Bow. Um, little did I know, I would still be working with young people. And as much as they stand here and say that um, I inspired them, they truly inspires me. Um, that's why I really kind of show up every day because they inspire me. You know, these are some, just as Mayor said, these are some very intelligent, I mean, well-spoken, well-taught, um, just respectful um, young people. I mean, I've had a great experience um, with these, I call them my babies, because they all like my babies when they're here. Um, so they are. And so they're so passionate about this city. And just as you heard them, I literally had a Zoom with them last night. This is what they poured out to me. Um, and so we have to listen to them. And one thing I know is we have to meet these young people where they are. Um, I can be a little old school too, raised with my grandma, but I definitely want to meet these babies where they are and we need to first listen to them. Um, they're crying out for help. They're crying out. They talked about mental health and how they're dealing with it. It's not just us as adults that are dealing with it. These babies are dealing with mental health issues as well. So we have to listen to them and we have to say, how do we help them meet the goals that they want for this wonderful city of West Memphis? Because I want my nephew, he was inspiring to be an engineer, I would love for him to come back and maybe be an engineer for West Memphis. I don't want him to go and stay in Fayetteville. Fayetteville got enough people. We want him to come back to West Memphis, home. This, he told you, this is where he was raised, this was where he was born, and this is where I want them to stay. So thank y'all so much. Hopefully we can move forward with our youth. So we identified the next city engineer with the, uh, with the fire chief, yeah. uh, city clerk. Yes. <laughs> See right yes. here. It's it's so many great young people that's out here. Uh, you know, uh, when we first, I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Hutchinson for helping us. Yes. With the program as well. She thank did. Yes, she yes. assisted us. Yes. And, yes. uh, and, and, and uh, you know something, this is really real. When they talk to me about uh, mental health, you know, and I've been thinking about my uncle who was in the military. He has post-dramatic uh, stress because he saw a lot of shooting in desert storms, people being shot, persons being killed. But I want you all to think about their mental stress. In some of our communities, some of them see when their friends may have been shot or hurt. Do you think that our young people are dealing with post-traumatic stress as well yeah. in our community? So they are dealing with that as well, and that's why yeah. I'm working so hard to come up with ways to try to keep them engaged. We yeah. am asking you all to we give are. them what we need because yes. yeah. our future is bright. Our future is off the change, and that's why I love our kids so much. Yes. Thank y'all. Mr. Holt, I know you had your hand up. Thank it makes you. me feel a lot better about the future of West Memphis. Thank you. Excellent job. Yes. Uh, I can even turn into my house now for that, that fire hydrant. Oh, Red. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought then someone said they wanted to be mayor. Come, 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 come on. Come on real quick. Come on real quick up here. <laughs> no, come no, Come on around here. <laughs> Mayor McClendon, real quick. Ahead, Just as, no, I don't want to say anything. You are, yeah, you guys are a great bunch. Um, my bathroom buddies, you know, you, you know, I, I expect so much of you all. Uh, we want to see those that are going to the 11th and the 12th grade. We want to see you guys again. Those that have already graduated, think about it. This is home. Home will be here. Bring back <laughs> the greatness that you have. But yeah, you all, you all have taught me. So thank you. I just want to say that. And also tomorrow. 
at our park, the oh, recreation building. Yep. Uh, you gonna tell them? I was gonna, you go ahead. No, the, you, I gonna, you all to think we're gonna have a little celebration for them from nine to twelve. Yep. So if any of the council people, please just stop by. All of them. Yeah, we're gonna invite yep. just stop by with them. That's yep. all right, Mayor. <laughs> Come on, Mayor. Can I get a second and motion to adjourn, please? A motion to adjourn. Thank you. I, and all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? No. None. We adjourn. <laughs> Mayor, I want to get a picture with you and the youth. If the youth can come up, I would